Hello again, everyone. I'm Lee Berger, a professor in paleoanthropology at the University of the Witwatersrand here in Johannesburg, South Africa, and an explorer at large for the National Geographic Society. And I'm inviting you on an adventure, an adventure behind the scenes of a brand new ancient human relative discovery. Today, I'm going to be introducing you to a new fossil hominid burying locality we discovered in the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site. The fossil burying site was discovered shortly after the formation of the National Geographic Society Hill Exploration Program based here at the University of the Witwatersrand in South Africa. This program of exploration was begun following the successful Rising Star Expedition of 2013. Members of this exploration team have included many explorers people may be familiar with from the original Rising Star Expedition, including Rick Hunter, Stephen Tucker, Pedro Boshoff, Marina Elliott, Maripang Ramalepa, Matabela Ciccone, and Dirk van Royen. Remarkably, the site I'm revealing to you is located just a few hundred meters from the Rising Star Cave system, and only about 500 meters from what is known as the Bolts Farm Complex of Caves, a series of fossil-bearing deposits known since the 1930s. But it's not part of either of these systems. It's a separate cave entirely. The site is a large cave system made up of three main chambers and a number of smaller side chambers, passages, and sinkholes. While the site has been known by amateur cavers for years and under a variety of names, we presently use its Witts University site accession number UW105. 105 is rich in fossils, all contained in very hard breaches or consolidated limestone rock. So the fossil bearing situation is similar to classic sites such as Swartkrons, Sterkfontein, Malapa, and Gladysfell, and very unlike the soft, unconsolidated sediments that preserve Homo naledi in the nearby Rising Star cave system. We can tell from evidence left behind that miners had heavily mined the site in the early 20th century for lime. With the extensive blasting, many of the areas of the cave system are subject to collapse and are dangerous, and this has delayed plans for working in the site since its discovery. The site is not specifically mentioned in any previous scientific literature other than my own surveys from the late 1990s and my 2008 surveys of the region. It is possible, though, that previous scientists had visited the cave as members of the 1947-48 Camp Peabody expedition had stayed in a house near the site. The locality might also have been viewed by some as part of the well-known Bolts Farm complex of caves, given its close proximity to these sites. It's hard to imagine it wasn't visited, though it's not specifically mentioned. It's important to mention that a famous but now missing hominid tooth was reportedly recovered from what was described as Bolt's Farm in the middle part of the 20th century, but the exact location of this discovery is not known and the tooth has been lost. It will be interesting to explore whether we've now discovered the locality of that mysterious find. Interestingly, also, scenes from the movie Tremors 5, Bloodlines, were filmed in the cave prior to its recognition as a hominid site. And graffiti from the movie is still visible on the walls of the cave in places. Yes, those cave scenes in the movie are filmed at the 105 hominid site. This, I suppose, makes 105 perhaps the only hominid site to appear in a movie with an average Rotten Tomatoes score of less than four. The initial hominid fossil discovery was found in a loose block of breccia, just lying on the floor of the cave. It contained a partial mandible of a relatively large tooth hominid that has an erupting third molar, an erupted second molar, and the impression of a first molar that's now fallen out. As graffiti from the movie is painted on the wall directly above this locality, it's likely that dozens, if not hundreds of people, had stood right next to this fossil without realizing the important discovery that lay literally at their feet. During our subsequent exploration of the fossil-bearing deposits, we found other possible hominid remains, indicating that this site may be very rich in fossil hominids. 
As I mentioned, there are three main chambers, all containing some fossils, several passages, and some large and beautiful sinkholes. We literally have just begun to explore the site's potential and are already making discoveries. As the original fossil was found in what appears to be a miner's loading ramp beneath a skylight sinkhole, we do not know as yet the exact in situ location from where this fossil hominid comes from. Given that the site falls within the Rising Star property, and because we have, due to COVID, moved our fossil preparation from the main campus of the university to a series of labs built on the Rising Star property, we have decided to now work in the 105 site at the same time we continue working underground in the Lissetti chamber of the Rising Star cave system and preparing fossil material from Malapa. And so, with the unique situation the world finds itself in, I've decided to do something a little bit different with this site. I'm going to share the entire scientific process with you as we prepare the fossils from the site, prepare the site for excavation, put in infrastructure, continue to explore the site, and attempt to establish just what hominid species are at the site and what other animals are there as well. We will eventually try to establish just how old these fossils are and ultimately understand the history of these ancient individuals we've discovered. You'll join our team of South African and international scientists as we do the work in real time that will eventually reveal the history of another ancient human ancestor. So over the next weeks and months, I and others will be sharing the process with you here on the Fossil Vault YouTube channel where this video is posted, as well as on others and my social media sites. By doing this, we hope to give you an unprecedented behind the scenes look at the many and varied scientific processes that go into studying and understanding a new hominid discovery. In this way, we hope to share with you be an interesting and exciting scientific journey. A journey that starts with this, the partial mandible of one of the rarest sought-after objects on Earth, the fossilized remains of an ancient human relative. And so to follow this scientific adventure, subscribe to the Fossil Vault YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook or Twitter for regular updates. And let's undertake this scientific journey together, exploring an ancient human relative.